Hi everybody, this is Bob Young coming to you again from uh, Redline Archaeology. It's been a busy week with appraisals and collections uh, I've uncovered all over the United States. Uh, today, uh, I have a large collection out of Corona, California. Uh, like I've said before, uh, California really produces some really nice condition collections uh, for me over the years, certainly. Um, it has to do with climate. I mean, the humidity is very low out there, kind of a desert-like climate in lots of spots there. Even though the collections that arrived to me coastal uh, in California, you would think the salt air and everything would chew up these cars and corrode them at some level. But, you know, out in California, you don't see a lot of homes with basements or attics and stuff is usually stored on the first or second floor. And uh, you don't go to get that extremes and heat, you know, inside anyway on the first or second floor as you would in an attic or a basement. You know, the attics are very uh, musty and, you know, in the Northeast and lots of parts of the country, mid-Atlantic states, South, Midwest. Um, and, you know, that really does affect the paint, uh, the metal of these cars and the plastic over the years. But in California, for some reason, it kind of kind of really uh, lends itself to producing some really nice collections. Now, I started this video before, but my my camera stand fell over when I stood up and my microphone cord hit uh, the bottom of the table. So I moved the venue here into uh, our dining room. So um, the box has been opened. Uh, let me get going here on what what is in it. It's a large box here. Lots of accessories, lots of stuff, but um, I only got to a few things before uh, I had technical difficulties. Here you have a, a jump ramp that has been open, but way back when, I guess 50 years ago, when the child got bored of Hot Wheels or whatever, uh, taped up the box. And uh, But the seller told me that when he was a kid that he was taught to really take good care of all his toys and belongings, and obviously he did. I mean, this artwork and the box itself, other other than being opened and where the tape was placed on, is in really excellent condition. You can see all around it, this part of the box was never open. It's still factory sealed and there. On the back, you see the little boy playing, you know, with a little strip action set with the jump with it. Okay, so there is an accessory called the jump curve. I mean the jump ramp, not the jump curve, what am I saying? It's because I have a half curve coming up next. So here's the half curve, as you can see. You know, same thing here. It was played with, but taped back down. All the artwork is excellent, as you can see in the back of it. And on this one end, this was never opened either, but just beautiful accessories. Great for any collector, uh, you know, that's perfect for my collection. I mean, I don't care if they're still factory sealed. It's great if they are, but they aren't. As long as the artwork and the condition of the box is really in good condition, you know, that's all that really counts to me. And here, the colors are really sharp all around. This side was never opened. This side was, looks like it was tape, but it did come open. And since it did come open, you can see how he took care of everything. Now, I don't know what that is, but that's coming out. Oh, maybe that was to absorb any type of humidity. Wow, that's interesting. But you still have the instructions and, and the lap counter and actually the insert that goes in there. So, boy, kudos to this gentleman as a child that really took care of his stuff. So, let's see. Here's one case. I'll get to that later. I'll do the cars last. I have to get through a myriad of accessories and race sets and everything else. He was a very lucky boy growing up in the 60s and 70s. Now here's, this is a little chewed up this box of Daredevil Loop. As you can see down here, there's a tear. Again, the one side was never opened, but how it was stored, maybe over time, it uh, got jostled around and ripped a little bit, but still, the artwork looks really good. Here's a custom, uh, looks like almost an antifreeze Firebird going through the loop. And there you go, more Otto Cooney artwork. Okay, there's a Daredevil loop. Put that here. So, keep in mind, while I'm doing this, I'm gonna to have to make adjustments and move this box out of the way when I get to the cars and push everything back. So just be patient with me today, folks. This is, this is a pretty big collection. So here we go. A really nice display piece, a dra drag race action set. This was one of my favorite as a child, one of the few that I actually uh, received either on my birthday or Christmas. And uh, 
you can see, you know, the, the finish gate here. You can see great artwork here. The colors are just like, like it was just produced. It's that nice. And there it is on the back with the little boy playing, you know, with the set. Now here's another real interesting piece that they put on some of the race sets. They would tell you which cars, they would check off which cars came in this set. So this set looked like a blue silhouette. And I don't know if I see another check. Maybe it was only just one car that came with this. But I thought two did. Maybe not. It just says blue silhouette, and that was it. Or blue, maybe Cougar. But that's it. I'm curious to know if the, the cars were left in here after being played with. So I will go through this and uh, you know, look. But there's a really nice display piece for anyone in this hobby. Uh, would be happy with that. So let's see what we got here. Feel this tape back. This is a rally case, but it went the extra step. And look how beautiful. I mean, that's just amazing to me. The condition of this collection, the accessories, the cases, everything. A lot of times, all these, you know, little cardboard, um, I guess you call them inserts, are missing. Let me open up. A lot of times, the tabs are chewed up, but there's a bunch of cards in there. And the insert which I expected, is still there. So we'll get to the cars later. That's coming. Just be patient. Get rid of this. Like I said, when I get these collections, it's like having an extra day of Christmas <laughs> when they come in. I just really enjoy. And, you know, I, I appraise so many collections every week. You win some, you lose some. But, you know, you, you kind of forget sometimes what's contained in these larger more extensive collections, you know, and uh, it kind of surprises me at sometimes. Uh, I'm seeing it like for the first time in hand, but I, I kind of forgot about it. So here, it's an official Hot Wheels card membership came in the club kit, whether it was a King Cuda, Heavy Chevy, typically the boss sauce came with it, January 1st, 1970. Typed in his name really nice and neat. And uh, I guess he probably had that framed or hung up somewhere. Uh, he did what I did. He never used the iron-on decals sheet, so that's perfect. And then, it doesn't even look like it was opened. The 1970 Hot Wheels magazine that I spent hours and hours and hours as a child looking through. I just stared at this thing. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It's one of my favorite, favorite pieces in the Red Line era is that magazine. It just brings back such great memories for me. All right, so what we have here is the Supercharger Sprint Set. Okay, as you can see, there's the Supercharger. Look how crisp and clean that artwork is. Just amazing. I mean, even the corners, everything. Looks like it just came off the shelf. And I'm sure he still has the inserts and everything here, but I'll know that later once I go through it. Obviously, you can hear the stuff crackling around in there, but I'm sure everything's complete. He confirmed that each set was complete, each accessory. And, uh, you know, this is just an amazing, amazing collection of accessories, cars, a little bit of everything. Oh, there she is. I, I have no idea why another box would be in here. It's okay. A couple more things are wrapped up. So, let me get this here, put that over here, I'm not sure what this is, it's probably cars, maybe you got the, yeah he did, oh I know what these are, these are the blister packs of the rumblers and badges and all that, so I'll get to that later too, I'll move all this stuff back, I'll keep it in view so you can still look at it, enjoy it, uh, a lot of people, you know, stop the video after I you know, release them on YouTube and take screenshots and they'll send me screenshots. Hey, is this car available? Or can you tell me what this is or that is? That type of thing. Oh, this is heavy. This is a 48 car stack case for sure. All right, let me, let me start jockeying things around here for you. So I want to, I don't want to rush through this video. I want to make it efficient and I want to make it enjoyable, but I, <laughs> 
I'll do the best I can. You know, when, like I said, when you get these things, I ask people to, you know, do the bare minimum for me in keeping this stuff safe. And this gentleman really was, uh, took things to heart and he was very respectful. And, you know, he, uh, I really appreciate it. when people sell me collections like this and they take the extra time to pack it properly in. Kudos to this gentleman named Michael that packed this stuff up for me like this. I mean, he doesn't have anything to doubt. So, I do appreciate that as a collector. You know, this case looks like it just came out of the toy section in J.C. Penny's store back in the day. It is that nice. I mean, I don't know if you can appreciate this up close, but even the top is no scratch, is nothing. Absolutely beautiful. Look at the, it. It looks brand new to me. If it had the tags on it, I wouldn't have been surprised. That is just stunningly in beautiful condition. And there's the price. $2.99 right there. I don't know if you can see that. $2.99 back in the day. Well, there you go. Look at the value of these accessories and these cars nowadays. Okay. I think... This is the last race set in this collection, from I remember. And it's a Snake and Mongoose set. Now, obviously, this was played with a lot. Let me try taping up a little rip there. It's okay, but 70-80% of the artwork is good on the front. It's good on the side. And good on that side. One end was never opened, it looks like to me. All right? And then let's see the back. And there it is. So, this could fill a really nice spot until you find another, but good luck finding another one, you know, in really nice shape or unopened. They're out there, but very pricey. Um, this is one of the most popular sets that Mattel uh, produced back in the day, in 1970. And um, I got to tell you, the Mongoose and Snake, the red and the yellow one, the first issues are some of the most common. I get them as much as I get paddy wagons, I gotta tell you, or red barons, those were split images, those type of cars. I get them in almost every collection. So I don't think this collection is gonna be any different. Okay, so that is it for the contents. So let me, uh, all right, that's what happened to me before, and I apologize for that. Like I said, this just adds personality to each of these videos. Can't help myself, I'm old. Um, let's see. Let's see what we can do here. I put that upside down, too. Sorry about that, everybody. But um, let, me get, let me get to the cars. I just have to be careful with this cord. Six foot cord, maybe I'll have to get a 12 foot microphone cord moving forward. But like I tell you before, in most of my videos, I'm not the IT guy and I'm learning, I'm getting better, is all I have to say. So let's move this back. Let me set this up, give you a nice backdrop to the cars I'm about to show everybody, and then you can keep an eye on all the stuff that just came out of this collection. I'll try to give you a view of everything. You know, really is uh, really is an impressive collection, to say the least. Uh, this Sprint Charger set's probably going to go back here is the biggest one. But you know what? See that little window up there? I could probably finagle that and, you know, insert a car in there, put it on display. You know, I think that would look really nice in that Sprint Charger set. The uh, drag race action set didn't have the windows. They just had the cars contained within the plastic bags. But, um, you know, all good. All good stuff. Let me uh, give you another view. That, you know what? We'll do this. We'll do this over here. Just try to angle some things for you. Where that goes. Well, guess what? You'll have to see that another day. So I can get over there and get it. So, doing the best I can, folks, just to, so you can keep an eye on everything as I'm doing this. Let me see if I can get over here. 
get that. There it goes again. Sorry, folks. This will be uh, one of my more memorable, memorable videos. <laughs> but I'm not stopping now. Sorry. I'm going to keep on going. All right. So here we go. Let's get to the cars. All right. I'll move the catalog there. We'll put the certificate and the sticker sheet with it. Have it a little bit out of the way. And I'll save the blister packs for last. Put them over here. And we'll go with the, we'll go with the flat 24 car case to begin with. I'm gonna get seated and I'll get comfortable. And then we'll talk about each of the cars. I'll show you and try to give you a nice close up of each. So you can really, really get a good view of these. Um, I've decided to test it. Oh, this one does not have anything, but it's a beautiful case. Okay, 24 car case. I don't see any rips that you see in the corners or tears anywhere. You got nice clear plastic in there. Didn't write it on the inside. Didn't catalog as cars. So that's a really, really nice 24 car case. So we'll leave that there. Okay. <clears throat> I've decided to... Uh, start selling small groups of cars each week now. I'm gonna test it, see how it goes. Um, hopefully one person doesn't ruin it for everybody, but we will uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, I'll give everyone a heads up uh, on my Facebook page on when um, the cars will be posted. I'll typically try to do it on a Sunday afternoon or an evening. Uh, if I can nail an exact time down, but I do spend a lot of time with the family on weekends uh, and during the week too as well. But, um, but I'll try to get a set time where everyone can set their uh, clocks to that uh, the cars will be put up on my Facebook page. But like I said again, the first grouping will go up later today and I will give everyone a heads up, maybe an hour warning, just so people can see the post or share it with any of your collector friends. and. It's going to, they're going to be sold on the first come, first serve basis. I do prefer trades, one to one trades, equal value. I will not consider any car in a trade that is less than C9.5, in my opinion. Now, you may grade completely different than I do, but when I grade cars, I think I've told you in my other videos, uh, I start at the wheels and work my way up. And uh, I have a certain system I've used for 30 years. It works for me. and. Uh, Please don't send me any toned out cars or chipped up or scratched up or paint pops or peppering or anything else, cracked windshields, uh, missing parts, anything like that. Uh, I won't even consider it and don't take offense to it. Uh, this is a very fun hobby for me. I enjoy it. I enjoy sharing what I do with people and please don't, uh, you know, don't let anything get in the way of that. I'll continue to do this and I'll continue to get as many cars into the collector community at a very reasonable price uh, as much as I can. All right, so I just wanted to remain uh, a hobby, a fun hobby, okay? So let's start with the 12 car uh, case here. So again, this is the backdrop here. You can see the little insert. A lot of times, more times than not, this is missing, I'd say. I'd say maybe 30, 40% of the time I will get that insert. Um, it still will be there, and this one is a really good uh, shape, and the colors are just amazing. So he wrapped these cars very meticulously as well, and I really do appreciate it. First up is an amazing condition, mongoose, red mongoose. Uh, can you see that? I will bring the camera a little bit closer to give you even a better view of the cars as I take them out now. But just incredible incredible condition even the stickers I mean this kid really took great care of his cars I mean this is about as close to blister pack fresh as you can get in the mongoose very nice and look at that as my buddy Todd DeShane would say I could shave in that base now oh, there we go let me get them in view here for everybody Okay, there's one. Like I said, mongoose and snake. 
some of the coolest castings you know I've ever seen, and um, uh, one of my favorite castings in the Hot Wheel line. You know, for those years, '68 to '72, but um, it's very, very common. They're very, very common cars. Well, this guy didn't wait long to poke his head out. Now that's about as nice of an old 442 Magenta you're ever going to find. I mean, the stickers look they were like they were just applied, and the paint. Absolutely zero toning. The wheels are about as nice as you're ever going to get the spoiler. It doesn't even look like it was ever run down the track. There's no nicks in the front, the back. And look at this base. And you, this is what I mean about California cars. I mean, that's almost blinding, as you can see that. Okay, so here's the olds. I'll take another 10 seconds for you to see it. You couldn't upgrade this. I always say, you know, this would be tough to upgrade or whatever. You couldn't upgrade this car. That is as nice as an old as you're ever going to see. Magenta, the most common color, but boy, oh boy. And you guess where that's going. That's right. Right in my personal collection. All right. A nice light spray. Let's see. This, oh, this is a Hong Kong car. Yeah, light spray. Again, doesn't look like it was run down the track. You just have that that light orange Hong Kong paint that you see in the light by Firebird. Stickers were applied, but very well taken care of car. Doesn't even look like it was run down the track to me. And look at that base. Holy smokes. Just amazing condition car. Okay. I got to tell you, more times than not, I'm pleasantly surprised at the condition of the cars of every collection that I get. Um, a lot of times, pictures don't do these cars justice until you see them in the hand. And I'd say 90... 90% of my collections are purchased, you know, outside a commutable distance for me, living, you know, outside of Philadelphia in southern New Jersey. So I, I don't get to see them up close and personal, but I always do ask the people that uh, want me to appraise their collections and sell them to me uh, to please take really good pictures. I, take, I tell them to take them outside in the sunlight. The sunlight's the best, uh, uh, you know, it's the greatest sterilizer in the world, but it also shows everything everything on these cars. And sometimes it shows a little bit too much. Uh, but I just try to be fair with people. And here's a white interior, aqua, heavy Chevy. Again, unbelievable, but I'll show you the base first. And you can spend more time on the car. Just beautiful. The stickers were applied. And I love it when these stickers were applied to these cars. People say, oh, I like them clean. And I like them that way too. But man, oh man, they were meant to. Like the, the beach bomb with the flower stickers and the Nomad, you know, I like to see them when they're placed on there. And, and here with the spoiler stickers, I think it looks cool. It, it really takes me back, I'll tell you. Really takes me back in time. Like 50 years ago, <laughs> hard to believe. Here's an, okay, here we go. Harry Haller, um, yellow, uh, another car you could never upgrade. You just couldn't. There's no way possible. That's about as blister packed fresh as you could possibly get in a car. I mean, unbelievable. No toning at all. Everything. Nice white interior. Just a beautiful, beautiful display piece. I'll put that right here, making sure you can see them. So, you know, I welcome questions, comments, suggestions. Um, private message me as well. You can PM me right off of my Facebook page. You can email me right off of uh, my website, redlinearchaeology.com. Um, but here's the next one. Okay. It's a tri baby. Uh, the base, this base is not as shiny, but still shiny. I mean, I'm comparing it to uh, near perfect cars. But it just has the slightest little blemish. I don't know if you can even see it right in front of the driver. Not sure if you can even see that. But 
just another one. I don't know how you would ever upgrade it. You know, just that nice. So here's the Tri Baby. Um, from what I remember, there's 58 cars in this collection, so we got a long way to go. But here's um, Whip Creamer. Um, this looks like to me an evenly toned um, lime yellow car. So for whatever reason, and there was a sticker placed on the front, I will leave that sticker there. I like to keep things as original as possible. But again, I mean, <laughs> never run down the track. Yeah, everything. Clear, clear sliding canopy. Beautiful whipped creamer. Anyone would be happy to have that car in their collection. Anybody. And who knows if that's the original paint. You just don't know. I mean, the tell. <laughs> I remember I had an orange cord, and I know people still don't believe me, but I do have pictures, and I do have people that have seen it up close and personal. From probably 20 years ago, it came out of the Tacone uh, Palmyra, Pennsylvania collection that I wrote about in my book, Redline Archaeology. That's on, on Amazon. And uh, they... Uh, you just don't know what was going on at the factory back then. And uh, it was an interesting story behind that orange cord. But all different types of shades of the different colors, um, you know, sometimes it's not toning. Sometimes it's just the, the, the mix of that day, you know, the spray of that day. Now, here's a beautiful aqua, dark interior. A lot of times I find the aqua TNT birds with white interiors, but this one has a dark interior again. I don't know how you'd ever upgrade this thing. Let's look at the base. Right. Here's the car. Let me, so you guys can see it. I know spoilers are very popular. Very popular. And I like them too. I like them all. I mean, there's not one Hot Wheels I don't like. Just a, a stunningly beautiful spoiler. All right, let's see what we got here. AMX2 Magenta. It's got like a little bit of smudge, but oh, came off. Okay, I don't know about this. I don't know, it's sticker residue or something. This car just needs a little bit of wipe down. And it'll be fine. Um, again, same condition. Wheels. Really nice base. Beautiful example of an AMX2. Magenta, really nice shiny paint. Beautiful, beautiful car. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna have to really think about increasing my personal collection after this one. And I've got a couple more coming in this week too that I don't know. I don't know if I, I might pass out when I open up these collections, but I have a few big announcements coming up, and I'll get to them later, but I've been so busy with with appraising collections from that article that um, I haven't even gotten to the real big announcement I'm going to make. So, um, oh, that thing will not, uh, won't snap. <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so, let's get to the 48 car case. I'll leave that there. Everybody can see it. Again, this case is about as nice and as new. I mean, look at this thing. That's probably the nicest case I've ever gotten from somebody. I mean, even the white divider trays are white. A lot of times they come, you know, all faded out like a, a yellowish, like a tan or yellow. It's unbelievable to me how this has survived. But like I said, California, for some, some reason, preserves cars and even other... States on the West Coast, when I get collections from there, aren't as nice as this, and the climates aren't, you know, that much different. So here is a copper beatnik bandit. And like I said before, with the cop with the beatnik bandit silhouettes, you have to check the domes out. That'll tell you if they've been played with. A lot of times they'll be scratched up, scuffed up. You won't be able to see in real well, but that is just not even touched. Again, a nice shiny base. I can't find anything wrong with any of these. I have not found one imperfection yet on any of these cars, but I know there probably is. My eyes aren't what they used to be, but there's a beautiful copper 
expand it. So, I guess I'm going to be buying a couple corny cases this week or another another display case, something to put these, some, a lot of these cars in because I can't find anything wrong with any of them. Now, this one has a couple, one, maybe two tight flea bites, something on the side there. I don't know if that's factory, but it's a beautiful Barracuda. The wheels, again, the back right would need a little upgrade in the back rear, maybe the front left, if you're, you're going to keep this in display, this. But just a beautiful example. Unbelievable base, again. There she is. One of the original 16. Jeff Workall always yells at me if I ever say Sweet 16. So I, I would never say Sweet 16 ever again, Jeff. I know he's watching. He's probably laughing right now, cursing me out or something. But um, that's that. Another car that'd be tough to upgrade. That would be tough to upgrade. Now here's uh, uh, one of my first um, Hot Wheels I ever received uh, was the blue, black roof Camaro. I talk about this a little bit in my book too. This, like the silhouette, we're like, Two of the first ones I've ever, ever received for my birthday. A little bit dull base there. Not bad, though. Again, another car. Beautiful condition. Would really be tough to upgrade this car. But you could. You could you could upgrade this. But this is... I'm telling you. About as nice as you're going to find in, a, in an original collection these days. I mean, think about it. This car is produced in 67, released in 68. So, you know, you're, you're working off of 53 years now when these cars were, you know, designed and produced and then sent out to the public. So, over 52 years, I should say. Um, here's a Cougar. This, I had the exact same car as a kid. Now, this has this, uh, I don't know, yeah, it's probably played with a little bit, but not too much. There she is. Nice blue Cougar. Trying to make sure I, I got everyone in the right light here. Got a few nicks there. And there's the base. There she is. Just trying to get everyone the best possible view of all these cars with the lighting. And give me your feedback. If there's something I'm doing wrong or you like me to spend more or less time on these cars, please let me know. I got broad shoulders. I can take constructive criticism. So I just want to make these, these videos as enjoyable uh, for you as they are for me. Here's a really nice blue Corvette. It'd be tough to upgrade this one. It does have a tiny stress crack in the window. I've had conversations with some really longtime collector friends of mine. A lot of times we think that stuff comes right out of the factory, these little tiny splinter. Almost looks like little splinter cracks. But beautiful base. Beautiful, beautiful Corvette. Another car that would be pretty difficult to upgrade. So there you go. I'll tell you what, these original 16s are getting tougher and tougher to find. Not only find, but... Um, in this type of condition, extremely difficult to find. Even for a guy like me, very difficult. Now here's here's one that looks like went through the Rod Runner a few times. It's got the light blue interior. Um, that looks like just aging, you know. It's um, this is a U.S. Cougar. This, uh, most people would be really happy to have this in their collections. Very nice car. There's the base. There she is. So this kid liked blue, obviously. Or that was all that was available on the pegs. I remember when I, uh, my mom worked in JCPenney and she worked as a personnel specialist, so she worked in the offices. 
and we would go up the escalator. I could see it as clear as day now as a child. And once I got into Hot Wheels, I had to walk right past the toy section to get to her office. And I can still see all the, all the cars hanging on the pegs on the end cap and uh, all the sets and accessories just sitting there on the shelves and just jaw dropped for me. And I used to love going to pick her up on Friday evenings after she got done work at nine o'clock. And you know, sometimes I'd actually get a car you know, if I was good that week, which I was most of the time, I'm sure. But, um, you know, I always loved purple and orange. And the, my original collection, which I regretfully sold years and years ago to help pay off my college loans, um, I always wanted purple and orange. And so I had a fair amount of purple, few orange, like the coupe and the Volkswagen. I don't think I had anything else that was orange there, but... Um, when we couldn't get purple, we, if there was a magenta or a blue, I, I had more magentas and blues than anybody. Uh, that was like, that's why I guess what satisfied me as a little boy was, yeah, blue, blue was okay. So I had a lot of blue cars. And here's a custom Firebird, red. Again, another great car, be difficult to upgrade. I think most people would be really happy to have this in their collection as well. You know, nice base. Really a nice car. But, um, yeah, so for me, m my default was always, you know, purple. So I always thought, and I always remember, we always had to pull the cars out and look in the back, and every once in a while we'd find one sitting all the way behind, like, eight or ten blue, maybe Cougars or something like that, whatever it was. Um, but, you know, purple was a tough color back then, and desirable for me and I know it's tough and still desirable for many collectors now. So we got an aqua black roof T-Bird. That's what I had as a kid. This was the car I had. There's the base. Uh, most people would be really happy with this in their collection. Well, you could upgrade this one. Pretty popular casting. I get a lot of people ask me for the, for the custom T-Birds. Now this car is going to give me a problem getting out of here. I can tell already. And what is it? Oh, it's a beautiful Eldo. I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to poke something up or grab one of the side roof panels here. That got jammed down in there, unfortunately. So this is going to take a little bit of work here. What? How that? Uh, you know what happened was he put it in on an angle. And it got slammed down in there, I guess, during shipping. But shoot, wait till you see this car. Holy smokes. That is pretty. Oh, Mustang, red Mustang. No louvers, no open hood scoops, so don't worry about that. Want missing a hood pin. Um, I'll tell you, the paint ain't bad other than being chipped up all over the place. <laughs> but, you know, I know people will be happy with this car too. But, you know, good starter car. For any collector, I would say. Not bad. There it is, custom Mustang. Got right there. So, gentleman was my age, 60, so I guess he started at eight years old too. He's got all these uh, original 16s. There's a nice green fleet side. Definitely upgrade this one. It's got some scattered nicks throughout, but again, I don't see much play wear. Well, in the back, got slammed in the back. So he must have been playing with these, the 68s when he first got them. There's a nice, nice green fleet side. Man, this Eldorado is sweet, but I hope I can get it out of there. We got another issue here with another car. Oh, got it. Really nice orange. That's the one I had as a kid. Orange fleet side. Just beautiful. Another one that'd be tough to upgrade. There she is. Really cool car.